I done strung along and strung along, going this way and that, whatever way would lead me to a moment of peace. That's all I want, to be as easy with everything. But I wasn't born to that. I was born to a time of fire. Noted American playwright August Wilson wrote those words. He lived in the Summit Hill neighborhood during the 1970s and 1980s. But he wasn't writing about the experiences of the Summit Avenue elite. Rather, he was concerned about the people who lived here, north and west of there, here in the neighborhood of Rondo of St. Paul, where the black community lived. Nothing much is left of old Rondo now. I-94 took care of that. You're never too far from the highway here in Rondo. Almost everywhere you go in the neighborhood, it follows you. Its drone is always there. <laughs> Evelyn Fairbanks knows that sound. She grew up in Rondo and lost her home to the highway. When we arranged an interview with Evelyn, we picked for a site this vacant lot on St. Anthony Avenue, her old street. The lot turned out to be right next door to the condemned house where her brother Oscar used to live. Rondo, we quickly learned, is a small world. The Blairs lived here downstairs. They owned this house. And when their daughter, Freddie, her name was Fredonia, when her daughter, Freddie, married my brother, they, they came to live here upstairs. So I visited this house quite a lot. It was, it was a pretty fancy house. It, we were, this was on the hill. It was past Dale, so we had, we had, Dale was our dividing line as to when you were pretty fancy. So it was in front of her brother's house where we talked to Evelyn about growing up in Rondo. St. Paul is a very clannish town as a whole, and each particular part is clannish. So the, the, the African Americans in St. Paul are very clannish. Uh, it takes a while to get in. You know, they will welcome you on the outside, but to be a part of... Um, but then when you are let in, you're at home. You know, and you know that. You know that. Rondo was where St. Paul's black community lived but it was not an exclusively black neighborhood. For most of this century, it was a racially mixed neighborhood. It was the kind of place where the local community center, the Halley Q. Brown Center, had a black Santa. But while most of the children who came to Halley Q. Brown were black, some of the kids who sat on that black Santa's knees were white. But there were special occasions when black St. Paul gathered together all by itself. There were numerous black churches where African Americans came to worship, and there were the neighborhood's social clubs. The Elks Club was black, and um, I didn't even realize that there was a white Elks, <laughs> you know. I thought the only Elks were black, and um, as they traveled throughout the country, uh, they went to the Elks. It was a place that strangers from other parts of the country could go and be welcomed as brothers and sisters. Um, and they had a parade. They, uh, they had a marching unit. And that was one of the proud moments of being black because, of course, no white group could do that. <laughs> yeah, they hadn't done it, you know. And, uh, but they had the, the different beat and the different step. And, uh, oh, oh, that was marvelous. This film was shot in the early 50s. And by the end of the decade, St. Paul's black community would change in a profound way. The government was busy planning highways. And the first interstate section in St. Paul would be built right through the heart of Rondo. And so, with little public outcry, block after neighborhood block was cleared to make room for the big road.
hundreds of homes were condemned and torn down, including the house where Evelyn grew up. At first, the road didn't really go anywhere. It was just a ribbon of white dropped into St. Paul's black neighborhood. It would be years before the highway hooked up to the east or the west, but finished or not, the highway had come. There had never really been any hope of stopping it. The neighborhood had to settle for one small victory. The original plans called for the roadway to be elevated for much of the route through Rondo. After strong neighborhood protests about an elevated route, highway engineers agreed to put the highway in a sunken trench. This is the warehouse at the Department of Transportation, where files upon files are kept for the thousands of state residents who lost their homes for I-94. Here in these files are the records of the 400 Rondo neighborhood homes that were torn down for the interstate. Fully 300 of these homes belong to black households. One of every eight blacks living in the city at the time lost a home to the freeway, and each has a file in this room, including Evelyn. Evelyn hadn't seen her house in 30 years before we uncovered photos of it stapled in her old highway department file. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. Isn't that something? You know, a child to a child, you don't see the upstairs. Oh my goodness, this is unreal. That's where it was. And I slept right in the front bedroom, right in there. And those are the stairs going upstairs. And the house next door. That was a nice house. That was a nice house. My whole childhood. And that stair on the hollyhocks, there they are. Oh man. Oh, man. Evelyn's neighborhood has changed a great deal since 1960, when the old homes were torn down and replaced by entrance ramps and frontage road apartments. The highway accelerated the changes going on in the neighborhood. In 1950, most of the people in Evelyn's part of Rondo were white. By 1960, after the homes were cleared, most of the neighborhood was black. Today. Evelyn's old neighborhood is changing again. It is still mostly black, but in the past several years, Southeast Asians have moved into the area and opened businesses in the neighborhood. The city's fastest growing ethnic group, the Asians, now outnumber whites in some parts of old Rondo. But it is the black community that best remembers what Rondo once was. I'm standing on my front porch. <laughs> This is a strange feeling, you know, to realize that, you know, that this was there. These are the same weeds, the same seeds, the same root system, you know. This was all under there all the time. Grass was fun, you see, especially this kind. You know, that's why you... You did that a lot as a kid. <laughs> you know, when I was a child, we could get out in that street and play a whole baseball game without a car coming by. And now look at them. Holy cow. <laughs> and this isn't even rush hour. <laughs> look at that. I don't like this freeway. <laughs> I mean, I don't. I don't like it. Let's go. <laughs> mm -hmm. 